Tonight was a very, very debut-heavy episode of NXT. Let's talk about it. What's going on, everybody? It's your buddy, it's your pal, Spaz Phoenix, the YWC Reality Check, here with your NXT review for August 8th, 2018. And like I say, really, really weird... Really, really weird episode of NXT. As I say, always go up to the annotations up above. If it's your first time here, check out the other playlists. There is a playlist for my previous NXT reviews. There is a playlist for the brief period that I was reviewing 205 Live. There will be, considering we kind of started talking about it tonight, there will be a playlist up there very shortly for the 2018 May Young Classic. There's also the one-off, um, the, sorry, the... Uh, what, what do I call it? The off-the-cuff series, uh, which is sort of like one-off topical type of things. Uh, there's the Q&A, if you want to participate in the Q&A as well. Speaking of the uh, off-the-cuff series, it was supposed to be done last week. Life sort of got in the way. In the next week or so, Kristen and I will be doing the fantasy booking for WWE Evolution. If you've got matches that you would like to see on your fantasy card, please feel free to put them down in the box below. We may or may not uh, include those in some of our fantasy booking for the show. It's going to be good whenever it does happen, hopefully the end of this week, if not maybe the end of next week. Um... As I say, we did start off uh, preliminary stuff for the Mae Young Classic, so that will be set aside for a separate vid, which I'm probably going to also be recording tonight, in all fairness. But tonight's episode of NXT started off with a video recap of the history between Ciampa, Gargano, and Black. They bombard us with graphics that we're going to see Black versus Ciampa at TakeOver. Sure we are. This is 2018. We have the internet. We know what the main event of TakeOver is, but it is what it is. We're going to get Gargano versus, or sorry, Gargano versus Black tonight in a grudge match of what happened two weeks ago, which is going to be great. That's going to be our main event. And we start off the night with Nikki Cross, which is always good, taking on Amber Nova. Amber Nova, who I've never seen before, who I really, really like after watching this match. Now, uh, they've made her a little gimmicky right off the bat. They talk about the fact that her dad was a mechanic and a hardworking man and a blue-collar guy and all that. But her actual gear has, like, tire treads on it, and it's got, like, outlines of tools and all that. I thought that was a bit much. thought it was a bit campy, especially for NXT, which is a lot more you know, bare bones, let's do a real character rather than her dad's a mechanic, let's sl slap some wrenches on her gear. But that being said, I have to say it because Nikki Cross is having a match. I still love her rendition of the of the sanity music. It's good. I love the fact that she comes to the ring seren uh, as the audience serenades her opponent with the Nikki's gonna kill you chant, which is good. Call her an elbow type start and Cross mauls her in the corner, shoves by Nova, arm drag by Cross in a back suplex. Delayed head scissor into the top turnbuckle by Nova is fucking nice. Hair's head scissor takedown by Nova. Thez pressing some mounted punches. Straight jacket choke with a post by Nova, which was good. She had her in the straight jacket. She posted her with the knee, and then while she had her in the straight jacket, she was hitting her in the back with the knee that she was using to post the knee. It was very, very cool. Arm drag by cross. Back elbow. Series of back elbows. Thez pressing mounted punches for her opponent. Anything you can do, I can do better, which is fucking great. She goes up to the top rope, hits the Nikki Cross body and the purge, and Nikki Cross gets the win. They go on and on at great detail on commentary about what a great match she had with Baszler at the last TakeOver, which leads me to ask, why is this TakeOver not a rematch? Nothing against Kyrie Sane. Kyrie Sane, Shayna Baszler, there's a great story there, rematch of last year's Mae Young Classic, while we're getting ready to start the next one. I get it, it promotes itself, but Nikki Cross and Shayna Baszler were so fucking good. If they, at the last minute, decide to throw Nikki Cross in there, because I can't believe right now that she's not on the card, I will be a happy guy. If not... Baszler versus Sane will be okay, I guess. Ricochet is supposed to have a match. We hear his epic music. We see all the lasers and whatnot that uh, consists of his entrance. But we see the Undisputed Era standing in that laser spotlight. All four of them. And eventually, as the lights come up, you see that they've already beaten the shit out of Ricochet in the darkness. Uh, Adam Cole proceeds to cut a pretty long and prolonged uh, heel monologue type promo, ending with the one, I will be the one and only North American champion after TakeOver, which is good. Adam Cole versus Ricochet for the North American Championship is one of my sleepers for match of the SummerSlam weekend. So that's all good. And I don't know who he was going to face, but you know, it's kayfabe. There wasn't anyone for him to face because they wrote the story that he was going to get his ass kicked by the Undisputed Era. 
Something I didn't really care too much about was Adrian Juande taking on Kashi Sono. So somebody I know don't know versus somebody I don't care about. I don't really care about the match. Ono won with an elbow to the back of the head because that's what baby faces do. Um, there, there's not very many people on NXT that I would say completely give up on. You know me, uh, Bianca Belair thing, uh, they just need to fix her gimmick. Uh, Andrade Cien Almas, they fixed his gimmick and he got fucking great. Sorry, I'm still getting used to new glasses, guys, so if you see me just fidgeting with them a lot, please just ignore it or go to another video, or sorry, go to another uh, f screen while you're listening to me and treat this like a podcast because you don't need to see me fidgeting with my glasses. They, they said last week we were going to have the Velveteen Dream experience and EC3 was invited. And this was a really cool, interesting way that they did this because these two guys are so cocky, so arrogant, and so just fake civil to each other. It's Velveteen Dream's pool poolside area at his place, I guess we're supposed to believe. They're so fake civil to each other while they talk about the match coming up at TakeOver. Um, EC3 says, you know what, I really did come here to fight you, but now that I see, I'm standing here face to face with you, I know that this is a match worth waiting for, and I can't wait to see what we're going to do at TakeOver. And then they throw a bunch of sort of positive nicknames at each other. Velveteen Dream drops his glasses, and it's a setup all along because, you know, Velveteen Dream drops his glasses, EC3 bends down to get them. Velveteen Dream goes for a sneak attack by the pool. One percenter by the one percenter into the pool makes him a winner in my books. Um, it was a very cool thing because you've got, like, as I say, you've got two guys that are over with the crowd, two guys that are probably baby faces in the eyes of the crowd, and two guys that you could say on paper are both heels. So the, the fact that they just got right in each other's faces and they were so obnoxiously fake civil to each other, it was that whole, like, kill them, with, kill them with kindness and do it with a smile on your face type of idea, and I really liked it, and both these guys really pulled it off well. Um... My problems with Velveteen Dream's gimmick are, are all but eliminated at this point. I mean, I uh, it is what it is, and what it is, he's very good at. Uh, I compare it to... Um, what can I really compare it to as, as far as that goes? I compare it to Jared Leto's Joker in Suicide Squad. People think that Jared Leto did a bad guy... Sorry, did a bad job playing Joker in Suicide Squad, whereas I think they took him in a really bad direction, and in that direction, he did a good job going in that direction. It's just the fact that, um, you know, it wasn't a direction that anybody wanted him to go, therefore they all thought it was bad. I think it's the same thing with the Velveteen Dream. I was, I was resistant to the gimmick because I thought there was sort of shades of gold dust and Orlando Jordan and all that sort of thing in there, but I, I'm sort of coming to the conclusion that the way they took him, he's good at it. I'm just gonna love that. Um, it's not the same as Bianca Belair. The Bianca Belair thing is just nails on a chalkboard to me. But that's just me. Um, yeah, I don't have anything else to say about this. I, mean, I thought I really, I really thought I did. Um, my mind went totally blank there. But this was a cool segment, a really cool way to uh, do a little bit of character building with these guys without getting too physical. I mean, one guy ended up in the pool at the end of the day, which when you've got two guys like that that want to be so cool and so uh, calm, cool, and collected, one of them jumping in, or one of them getting dumped into the pool is probably more damaging to their ego than a punch in the face would have been. So it's all good. We have the debut of Keith Lee, which is apparently a name that everybody else is really, really looking forward to. I have never seen Keith Lee before in my life. I'm not going to lie, you guys know I don't watch the indies, other than Destiny, obviously, because they're awesome, going to see them in a couple of weeks, uh, but the, he's taking on Marcel Bartel, which is just basically the guy they gave him to chew on for his debut. Kind of interesting for me, only in the sense that the last time I went to an NXT house show, I got to see Marcel Bartel, and I was making fun of his name because I couldn't pronounce it properly, but I saw him take on Ty Dillinger, and he's German, so he's always doing the nine, 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 and every time he yelled out nine in German, the crowd in Toronto, because we're cool like that, would shout 10 back at him, which which was all good. But this guy's really good in the ring. He took Ty Dillinger to about a 20 minute really good match at the house show that I was at. So I recognized his name more than I recognized Keith Lee. And this was supposed to be Keith Lee's big, you know, coming out on TV. Like we saw, we saw Nova at the beginning of the show. It was her first TV match on NXT. It's Marcel Bartel's first TV match in NXT. And it's Keith Lee's first TV match in NXT. So you'll notice now why I say that this show was very debut heavy. Now that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. If anybody remembers that joke from Christian and DDP back in the day. Nobody does because it was it was lame. Anyways, I have to laugh at Keith Lee coming out in the hoodie with the, with the sleeves cut off because that is just the cliche 
cliche gear for somebody that's big. We're going to give them a hoodie. We're going to give them that, that slight little bit of a boxer look. We're going to give them the hoodie with the cutoff sleeves and we're going to show his muscles and that's good. But the thing is on the back of his hoodie, on the front of his hoodie is his own silhouette. That's awesome. On the back, it says bask in my glory. Yeah. Anybody remember, any, side note, anybody remember the story that Batista's told on a lot of different podcasts where he was debuting in WWE as the assistant to Reverend Devon and he took the only suit he had to the show that night and they told him to rip the sleeves out of it. Anyways, I don't know why I went on that rant, but that's what the whole Keith Lee thing with the sleeveless reminded me of. Anyways, I don't know why I ramble on those tangents sometimes. Uh, cheap shot by Bartel to start, right hand knocked down by Lee, because did I mention, Keith Lee is fucking huge. Uh, double chops to the throat by Bartel in a series of strikes. Drop kick by Lee, which looks absolutely terrifying. Boot and elbows by Bartel. Step up in Zaguri by Bartel was pretty fucking pretty. I'm just putting that out there. Trapped mud hole stomped in the corner. Sort of ties him up. If you can imagine how uh, 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 Andrade Almas does that thing where he jumps and sort of catches himself in the rope and kind of lounges for a second. Well, Bartel sort of forced Keith Lee into a position like that and gave him a mud hole stomp sort of off center of the corner. Two-handed chops in the corner by Lee nearly cave in Martel's chest. He misses the splash, however, but there's a front suplex toss by Lee, a pounce and a jackhammer, and he gets the obvious win. Um, really, really interesting for me. As I say, um, the crowd was obviously really, really into Keith Lee. I'm guessing that he was big somewhere else. I'm not saying that to be derogatory. I'm literally just saying that because I'm not familiar with him. Was he from ROH? Is he somebody from New Japan? Uh, is he somebody from impact that I missed fill me in down in the in the box below but everybody else seemed to be really really excited especially on Twitter about the debut of Keith Lee I was I thought it was kind of cool that I've already seen Marcel Bartel now that being said at that same house show I saw Ricochet before Ricochet debuted in NXT so maybe that was just a uniquely good house show uh, we get the announcement that next week we're going to see the Street Profits versus the Mighty we're going to see Kyrie Sane versus Aaliyah and we're going to see Tyler Bate versus Roderick Strong um, Street Profits versus the Mighty one team that I really really like versus one team that I can't stand, but they're getting better. Kyrie Sane is probably going to beat the crap out of Aaliyah, which makes me sad because that's my hometown girl. Tyler Bate versus Roderick Strong is as good as it's going to be. Let's be real for a second. But then we have a match, qualifying match for the Mae Young Classic, which I'm going to address further in a separate video. Therefore, I'm not going to talk about it here. Our main event is Aleister Black versus Johnny Gargano, which you think is going to be a knockdown drag out, but it doesn't actually last that long because we have to tell a story Oh yes, Black goes for the Black Mass early. Aleister Black has a great pissed off face. Now, if you look on the main roster, right now, the person with the best pissed off face in WWE is either Samoa Joe or Ronda Rousey. Aleister Black's got a pretty good pissed off face too, and he carries it entirely in his body language too, which is really, really cool. Goes for the Black Mass right off the bat, and he misses both men trade strikes for a long time. We got these like one kick knockdowns from Aleister Black that when you get the size discrepancy between him and, and uh, Johnny Gargano, it looks like he's booting a small child in the face. Uh, suicide dive by Gargano in a mud hole stomp slingshot spear gets countered by a high knee by black so basically gargano slingshots himself into alistair black's kneecap and that cannot be good times series of double clotheslines and a double knockdown knocks down both guys now this is one of those things that i can't really stand you want to make two characters look even and i get that i really really do and i appreciate that because johnny gargano being the underdog johnny gargano being the guy that i like a little bit more in this match but if you're gonna have two guys run into each other clothesline each other alistair black should get the better of that exchange shouldn't he uh johnny gargano shouldn't be easy he shouldn't be easily he could do it he shouldn't be easily taking somebody like the size of alistair black off their feet the size that he is but double clothesline spot, they knock each other down. In comes Tommaso Ciampa, who tosses out Gargano, beats the fuck out of Aleister Black, his one opponent for takeover. Gargano gets back in there. The three of them kick the absolute living shit out of each other for a while. And William Regal comes out to tell us what we've all already known, what we all want to hear, what we all want to hear confirmed. The three of you want to kill each other. I'm not going to stop it. I'm not going to avoid it. I'm not going to turn away from it. I'm going to let you do it. NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4, Gargano versus Black versus Ciampa for the NXT Championship. And moreover, Nalo pipes up on commentary to say, and I'm going to have to double check this because I don't know this off the top of my head. 
but he pops up immediately to say this will be the first time the NXT Championship has been defended at a takeover in a triple threat match. Now, I don't know if that's true, and I haven't taken the time to look, but if that's true, that's kind of cool, and it kind of has its own little spot. That in itself is a good little fact. You don't need to throw three or four or five extra stipulations on it like the main roster would. Now, don't get me wrong, the main roster for SummerSlam, as much as people are shitting on it, we're getting some good matches out of this. We're getting Charlotte versus Carmella versus uh, Becky Lynch, which is good. We're going to get Ronda, Ra Ronda Rousey versus Alexa Bliss, which is going to be good. We're getting Samoa Joe versus AJ Styles, which is a gift to any old school TNA fan, because we know what those two guys can do. But at the same time, everybody was excited about Styles versus Nakamura, and we see where that went. Booked themselves into a nice little cock-kicking corner. Um... But this, I, I've said it already, Adam Cole versus Ricochet could be the sleeper match of that entire weekend. This could be as well. I feel really bad, and I've said this for a couple of weeks now, I feel really bad that it took Aleister Black facing off with these guys to get him and that title back into the main event of a pay-per-view. I think that's the only... That's the only downside to the Gargano Champa feud was they totally outshined the champion and totally outshined the championship for I think three pay per views in a row, and that doesn't do well for the championship, but it does do well to show how much more important their feud was. This is a really cool match, or sorry, this was a really cool episode of NXT. It wasn't too flooded, like I say in a uh, in a later video. I'm going to discuss the uh, May Young Classic qualifier that happened tonight, but. Um, that being said, next week we've got Street Profits versus The Mighty to look forward to. Kyrie Sane's probably going to kick out Aaliyah's ass, which makes me sad. And Tyler Bate versus Roderick Strong are going to do what they do best, and that's just put on really kick-ass wrestling match. Um, don't really have anything else to say. Let me know what you think down in the box below. I've been Spaz, your YWC reality check. Subscribe up there, talk down there, start a conversation. Keep all, all these conversations going. Don't be a stranger. I'll talk to each and every last one of you later. But for right now, I am tagging out. Bye, guys. Like me!